Hey you guys, welcome back. It's another DIY video and in this one, I'm gonna be swapping out the colored gauge face on my sports chrono inside the Porsche 911 991. Let's go check it out. So this is a mod that I've wanted to do for a while, even before having the 991. With the 997, uh, I really wanted to change the face of the Sports Chrono. Having seen a couple of other um, sort of higher end 911s, like a black turbo with a yellow gauge face, and I've seen a couple of uh, red GTSs with a red Sports Chrono gauge face. Uh, I, it's something I've wanted to do for a while. Unfortunately, the interior of my 997 was sand beige and my calipers were yellow and yellow and sand beige wouldn't have really gone together. I could have done white, but I thought that was a little boring. So I just stuck with the black. Um, with my 991 here, I have a black interior. I have black dials uh, within the instrument cluster and I've got a black sports chrono gauge face. Now the, the great thing about having a gray car, even though it's a bit boring and a black interior, even though it's completely basic, is that you can put in a few pops of color without really ruining the color scheme too much. So, I like the fact that the red tail lights sort of stand out with the gray color. I'm gonna then sort of uh, include a little bit of red on the interior, and so the, the, the gauge face that I've bought is indeed red. Now, it's not the guard's red, which is the really bright red. I think it's the carmine red, or the burgundy red, um, that Porsche put out. I, I think it's the carmine. I'll show you in a second and you can tell me. At the moment, it's the only red that's going on the inside of the car. <laughs> um, so I, I've thought about other red accents that I could put in there, like red seat belts, like some deviated stitching, maybe on the steering wheel column, uh, on the door panels or on the dash itself. But you know, I'm just gonna take it one step at a time. And today it's all about the sports chrono. Now I'm sort of 80% excited for this job and 20% scared. And what I really mean is it's the other way around. <laughs> I'm 80 or 90% scared. Because if you watched any of my videos, you know that I'm uh, a little clumsy, a little impatient, and uh, you know, occasionally take my knife to things when uh, they don't go well. Oh look, there it is in the background. That's my, um, that's my airbag face that has a load of knife holes in it because I got fed up with my steering wheel update. Anyway, that was the old James. That was the old auto amateur. This is the new auto amateur that has loads more patience Kinda, <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, uh, it's a bit of a fiddly job, so I'm gonna try and take my time. Um, once again, another YouTuber has helped me out, a guy called Cam Hughes. Uh, he had a video um, where he swapped out, he didn't swap out his gauge face, but he at least popped the sports chrono out from uh, the top of the dash. So he's at least gonna get me halfway, hopefully. Um, and he's also the guy that did the video of the center console lid swap, um, which, uh, which helped me out. And another YouTuber, um, YOLO Photos, I think the name is. Um, you should check out his channel. Really, really fun stuff. Uh, not just Porsche 991 content, but a whole bunch of other stuff. But you should check out his channel as well. Uh, he also has a couple of self-help videos. Anyway, let's take a look at the gauge face and take a look at the tools for the job and uh, then we'll go get started. So here's the gauge face. Um, I bought it from eBay and uh, it's about $89 plus shipping. Um, I don't know if it's OEM or not, but it seriously looks like it. The font is the same, the color is, is very Porsche. Um, wow, I said Porsche, not Porsche. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, it looks like OEM and it just sits on top of the, uh, the black dial. So I'm not gonna need to 
take off the existing face uh, and replace it, I'm just gonna sit this off on top. So there's the, uh, the gauge face. Um, I'm gonna use blue tape to protect the dash as I'm fiddling around with my trim, uh, my trim kit. This is gonna help me pop out the Sports Chrono. I'm not entirely sure which um, screw heads I'm gonna need, uh, but I've got a range of um, T and S's and H's there on my trusty uh, screwdriver. And then when I'm fiddling around with the Sports Chrono to get the back off and to get it out of the housing and take the face off, uh, I'm gonna be putting it on this soft microfiber towel so that I don't damage it or scrape it. And that's it. Hopefully it should be really straightforward. So the ones in the back have come out really easily. The ones in the front were okay. Uh, the ones here now on the left and the right in the middle um, are resisting a little bit. From what I've seen on the other videos though, as long as I pull straight upwards, they will come out. Oh, ho, ho, almost there. just need to follow my own advice and be patient. Yeah, it's this one right here that seems to be a pain that won't come up. Almost there, come on. Okay, blue tape is annoying me. Just right here. Come on, you bugger. Okay, well, even though I had to use quite a bit of force, uh, none of the clips have been damaged and uh, I now just have two wiring harnesses to remove. Here it is. So it was a little bit fiddly, um, but I didn't break any of the clips. It came out relatively easily. I've got the speaker cover there. Um, I've got the vents here and then the sports chrono, which is gonna require just a few uh, screws and it's gonna come out. Let's take a look at the top of the dash. You can see um, that there is one uh, clip hole there, another clip goes here, one either in the middle there. In fact, no, let me take that back. There's one there, one there, one there, and one there. So there's four in total there, and then two at the front. And they hold that piece of plastic into place. And then you have the speaker wiring harness there, um, and then you have the sports chrono wiring harness here. Um, the Sports Chrono one was really easy to take out. The speaker one was a real pain. Um, 
I think if I'd have had a small flathead screwdriver to push the clip in, it would have slipped out easier. Um, I was a little worried I was gonna break that one. Um, but there it is, without the Sports Chrono. So here I have the Sports Chrono uh, component in the dash trim on my workbench. Um, I'm using microfiber towel cloth uh, to keep it safe, uh, so I'm not gonna damage it. Um, now I need to uh, use a T20 uh, Torx um, socket to get out first two screws. That one was remarkably loose, actually. That one seemed like it was uh, tight enough. So here's the uh, chronometer itself. Looks very nice. So I need a T6 screwdriver uh, to get the two screws out from the back. So let's go ahead and do that now. This is a ridiculously small screwdriver. <laughs> So now I'm gonna try and take this apart in a way that I remember how to put it back together. So first came off the cap, then came off the rim. And in fact, that cap looks pretty dirty. This is a good opportunity to give it a good clean. But first came off the cap, then the rim, and then I'm gonna need a pair of tweezers to take off the um, uh, the what's the names, you know what I mean. What are they called? Uh, the fingers of the clock? The fingers of the clock? Needles, the needles maybe, I don't know. So a little bit of Googling, and it turns out that you just needed uh, to use the clock face to pull up to actually get the, uh, the needle off. Um, and unfortunately, I missed that bit on the video, so I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, you literally just use the clock face and pull up, and the needle just pops right out. So that was, that was relatively simple, even though it was completely nerve wracking. <laughs> so now I've got that apart. I'm now left with the face. And it looks like there are four small flathead um, screws holding the plastic into place for the clock face. Can you see that there, four small flathead screws. So, let's get to work. This is definitely one of the more nerve wracking jobs to do on cars. This gauge face has a really nice weight to it. Um, almost like a really heavy kind of silver coin. Um, I like it, good quality. So now let's see uh, the other gauge face. So this should, oh, that looks like it's gonna fit under. So I guess I am gonna have to take this down. Aha, it just comes apart. A little bit of, a uh, little bit of force. Yeah, I, I just basically put my uh, fingernail in there and uh, it came loose. So the new gauge face just sort of sits on top like that. And you can see actually uh, just how similar they are. Um, I would probably suggest that the OEM one is of a higher quality. And you can see that it has a slight kind of carbon fiber almost texture on the 
back behind the numbers where this is just a flat dial. So it's definitely not as nice as the OEM. So if I was ever to do this job again, having found a, a nicer gauge face, then fine. But the, the quality still, you know, just on its own is really, really nice. It's just not exactly the same as OEM. Anyway, we'll see. So there's the gauge face. It's about right. And then the gauge face also came with this presumably sticker which is going to stick on top of the black gauge. So far, so good. You need delicate hands, and this is uh, not a job for people like me who don't have a lot of patience or <laughs> a delicate touch. So there's the red uh, bezel. I think that's what it's called, over the black. Okay, that's lined up. Shit, it was. Okay, that's lined up, and I'm gonna get a screw ready to go. That's the top. Okay, so there's the bezel with all of the screws in. Um, and actually, just to make sure the screws stay in place, I've put a little bit of blue tape on the back. One of them didn't want to stay in, and I just want it all to stay together. It shouldn't make any difference to the clock face at all. Um, and if it does, I can always take it apart. Uh, so now it's time to put everything back together. And actually, let me do this first. There's the, the lip, the rim. Okay, that's back together. Uh, I'm gonna go in reverse order. So I, the last thing I took off was the large uh, dial, the large finger, I can't even think what that bloody thing's called. The, uh, the clock finger face thing. And it just clicks as you push down with a little bit of force. And then the black cover, uh, the black cover goes on top. All right, I'm just going to clean this. Uh, I'm just going to clean this um, 
piece of plastic real quick. Okay, we're now going to put this um, back into the housing. And this is where it all kind of screws back together. Of course, you want to make sure you line it up straight. Yep, you want to make sure you line it up straight. Not too tight, but just hand tight, I guess. That's what I'll, I'm comfortable with. Uh, so there it is. It's back together. Now just to put the screws back in. Wow, guys, that was a fun job. It was pretty nerve wracking, to be honest with you, because a lot of the stuff inside that uh, unit is pretty delicate, especially the needles. But I think if I can do it, anyone can do it. I would say overall, it's sort of like a five out of 10, uh, you know, for complexity and level of effort and patience. Um, I mean, that's number one. Just be really super patient if you're going to do it. The whole job, if you were going to um, take your time, it would still probably only take like an hour, hour and a half. Um, I really enjoyed it though, and I'm really, really happy with how it looks. So I'd love to know what you think. Tell me uh, if you like it or not, um, whether you think it goes with the car. Um, I'll put the links to the, uh, to the, the, the eBay seller I got the, um, the chrono gauge from. And most of all, like two things I'm super happy with. One, I didn't break anything. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's all gone back together. It really is plug and play. I didn't need to disconnect the battery uh, or anything like that. So it's plug and play. I didn't break anything, but number two, uh, I saved myself like 700 bucks. I didn't have to go and buy the whole brand new unit from, uh, from Porsche uh, or from Suncoast or anyone else. It was just 80 euro or $80. I can't remember which one from the eBay seller. So job done. I feel like I'm getting all of my mods done for the winter before the snow actually arrives. <laughs> but whatever, I'm just gonna, you know, keep going. Thanks for all the comments. Uh, thanks for your support as ever. If you guys have any ideas of jobs that I might wanna do over the winter months, please let me know because I'm gonna start scratching my head soon, I think. Um, but I'll see you in the next video soon. Take care, bye.